Hey guys, it's Shane, or at all it's Shane, back again for another match reaction, this time after another preseason game. The Golden Boys have defeated Fortuna Düsseldorf 3-1 uh, in Austria. Um, going on for a few thoughts about the game, I thought, first of all, the result is encouraging. It's a Watford win, it's as simple as that, but um, again, it's relatively inferior opposition. Düsseldorf didn't do very much, I thought, in the first half there, that goal from them. Um, that stunning volley was incredible, but it was the only real thing that Dusseldorf kind of contributed to the game. But um, there were lots and lots from our perspective, lots and lots of standout performances. You know, if we were kind of going through some of it, I thought, first of all, I thought Mark Navarro had a fantastic first half. Uh, he looks good, he looks strong on the ball. Uh, he's a tall lad as well, so I know he's by trade, he's a right back. Could he maybe be, be playing centre back for us with a lack of. I would say maybe credible resources there that we have. All right, we have Cabasele, Kafka, Cabasele, who I thought looked fantastic as well in that first half. As much as those two guys are kind of our go-to guys this season, maybe with Maps in third place, could Navarro maybe play a role there? Uh, Kiko, obviously, we've got a right back as well. Um, but I thought Mark Navarro looked really, really good. Uh, I thought Hughes and Pereira, as I said on um, on Twitter earlier, great to see Pereira back again. The summer's been really on... It's, it's, it's kind of been flip-flopping a little bit. Will he go to Torino? Will he go to Torino? Turns out Torino haven't actually made a bid for him and that's all been a little bit of just just been rumours really but it was great to see Pereira back. Great to see Hughes in there again. I think Hughes is going to be another he's going to be crucial for us this season. Great to see them back again and up top Isaac success scoring the first goal. Um, good finish from him as well but even better work by Andre Gray. Um, Andre seems to be having a very good pre-season at the moment. Scored of course against Cologne. Uh, looked good again today. Um, and his fellow striker Troy Deeney scoring again today as well. A very good header, solid header by Troy. Uh, kind of thing I want to see more of from him, more goals from open play as well. Uh, good to see that he's got his pre-season off to a very good start. But I just kind of, for me, I kind of urge a little bit of caution when it comes to Troy and Andre as well as they're playing now. And it's great to see that they're playing well. I'm not taking that away from them. But personally, we're going up against the second division Bundesliga side. You know, I could probably find I could probably find space in that back line. You know, it's not it's not that difficult. I think when it comes when when it comes to next week's game against Brentford, a Championship side will make it tougher for us. That's where we're going to need to see what Andre is made up of against his old team, what Troy is made out of uh, in that respect, and as well. And listen, as well as they're playing, it was one half for Andre, one half for Troy. Performing well in the one up top position, I still think there's room there. We can put maybe we can put them two up top together but I just can't see uh, Javi actually doing that so as well as they are playing I would just advise a little bit of caution and um, these pre-season games were only really for fitness and to, to kind of get a sense of well from the manager's perspective the kind of players that he has got and a chance for the players to impress the manager as well to work out new formations and to try out new uh, tactics etc and uh, speaking of new tactics that have been tried are very interesting in that first half to see uh, Tommy Hoban playing in that central midfield kind of role in there. It's a very, very odd role. I didn't think he performed that well against Cologne. He looked okay today, but uh, you just imagine that's probably just an experimental thing, really. Capu looks good under Graffia, but as I said in my last one, uh, as I said in my last match reaction against Cologne, it's very much, he's very hot and cold. He's great one game, poor another game. And today I just thought he was a little bit cold for us, uh, in all honesty. But second half came around. Of course, the whole team changed. Great to see Pontus Dalberg in a Watford shirt. Again, he is the future of this football club. There's no doubt about that when it comes to our goals. Sorry, goals when it comes to our goalkeeper. Um, and of course, we had the much talked about Mr. Jack Rodwell in the starting eleven. And um, yeah, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I didn't really notice that he was there for most part of that game. Uh, I saw his name on the team sheet for the second half, but um, Obviously, with the big news that broke this morning, uh, Tom Cleverley is out with a with an Achilles problem when he will miss the start of the season. Look, I'll be I'll be quite honest with you. Rodwell isn't the answer, and I'm quite happy to wrap other players up in cotton wool and uh, to protect them that and wait for Cleverley to get better than to get a Rodwell in the squad. Uh, Rodwell is not the kind of guy we need to be making, you know. It, we've we said it before. Scott Scott Duxbury has said we need, we we want to be the best of the rest. Is what he said. Teams that want to be the best of the rest do not sign players like Jack Rodwell. It is as simple as that. And we need to be looking elsewhere. I would have quite liked maybe a younger player, someone under twenty three, maybe filling that role in there. Um, it looks like Rodwell is going to be a part of the squad. He's I think I imagine he's passed his trial at the football club. Even though some of the pictures of him running look like he was uh, running to, like 
learning to walk for the first time. Uh, I'm not I'm not very impressed, as you can probably tell, but he's in. He looks he looks to be in the squad for now, so let's just get behind him. Um, Got to be honest, I thought, as I said, I thought he was relatively quiet, but two players that really impressed me in that second half, Ben Wilmot and Ken Sammer. I mean, oh, God, I mean, Ken Sammer looks so lively. He looks a level up on Richarlison, and of course, we've all been dissecting the news over the last 24 hours or so. Richarlison, is he staying? Is he going? What's happening with him? For me, 50 mil, you've got to let him go. It's unbelievable business by the Potters. Unbelievable to get a price for a Charleston like that. And let's be honest, he hasn't performed since November. And look, I think take take emotion out of it. It's a fantastic deal. Will I miss Richarlison? Probably not. Um, I thought his attitude was poor. I thought his general demeanour was shit. I just don't think he was trying as hard as he wanted to. And quite frankly, if he's not willing to play for the shirt, if he's not willing to play for the fans, then quite frankly, there's the door. You can just fuck off because I don't have any time for players like that. 